hello there. Welcome back to another episode of Arcade with Alvin. Today, I'll be making the Butterscotch Cinnamon Pie from what I believe to be one of the best games of all time, Undertale. This is Sans. He's gonna keep me company while I cook. Now let's just, let's just go that way. For the pie, it's a pretty straightforward pie crust. I'm combining 170 grams of floury, I mean flour, a stick of cold butter, a teaspoon of kosher salt, and mixing together until the butter pieces are the size of little pebbles. Then I'm adding in 55 grams of ice cold water and mixing it until a shaggy dough forms. Nothing crazy, pretty straightforward pie crust. Because this pie is made by a rather mother-like figure in the game. Her name is Toriel, and even though she's different than most humans, her demeanor comes off as someone who's very warm and caring. Once the dough is ready, I'm transferring it to my work surface and shaping it into about a disc 6 inches wide. After wrapping in plastic wrap, this dough disc goes in the fridge to firm up for at least 30 minutes. When it's ready and chilled, I'm rolling the dough out to about 13 to 14 inches wide in diameter, or at least 1 inch longer than the diameter of the pie plate that I'm using. After delicately transferring the pie dough to the pie dish, I like to use a sort of a pull and crimp method to make sure that the dough can nestle against the bottom of the pan. Any excess dough along the edges, I kind of just leave it hanging over the side. I've been putting my hands on this dough, so it does need to chill in the fridge for another about 10 minutes. I'm going to blind bake this pie crust, which means first laying down a sheet of parchment paper that I've crumpled in my hands. This is filled with baking weights of your choice. I decided to use dried beans because they can be reused many, many times. This goes into an oven at 375 degrees for about 20 to 30 minutes. I like to take out the weights when the rim of the pie is starting to get brown. Once the parchment and the beans have been removed, this returns to the oven to bake for another 20 to 25 minutes so that the bottom can get nice and golden brown. After it's been cooled, I'm using a knife to trim off any excess shaggled parts. For the butterscotch cinnamon filling, I'm first starting with 200 grams of brown sugar and 60 grams of water in a medium saucepan until boiling. This gets turned into a rather dark caramel, but not burnt. Once the caramel sauce stage has been reached, the heat gets turned off and in goes 80 grams of heavy cream, turning this into a beautiful luscious looking substance. Then goes in 30 grams of unsalted butter, followed by 480 grams of whole milk. Oh, it looks like I was not supposed to add in all of the milk. Only about 400 of the grams. 80 of it was supposed to be used to mix in some cornstarch, but because I messed up, I decided to scoop out some of my butterscotch mixture and use that to melt the cornstarch in. This gets turned into a butterscotch cornstarch slurry of some sort, which in now goes three large egg yolks and half a teaspoon of kosher salt. Once this is all whisked together, I'm ladling in a couple of spoonfuls of the butterscotch mixture from the pan into the one with the egg yolks. This will help temper the egg yolks as I mix it, so that the egg yolks don't overcook. Once all of the warm butterscotch goodness is inside the egg yolks and nicely mixed, this entire thing gets returned back to the pot and cooked for about 1-2 to two minutes until thickened. It's really important to constantly stir with a spatula or some tool here, as there will be lumps forming on the bottom if you don't. To finish seasoning, I'm adding in 1 teaspoon of cinnamon with 2 tablespoons of vanilla paste. If you add this too early, it kind of cooks out those flavors a little too much. And because I usually end up with a few lumps no matter how hard I try, I'm going to strain the filling directly into the crust. After a little wiggle jiggle and a little spread spread, this pie cools to room temperature and then gets put in the refrigerator for about 4 hours or so. Now whipped cream isn't technically in the game, but I thought a nice cinnamon flavored vanilla whipped cream would go well with this pie. So in a glass bowl I'm combining 1 cup of heavy whipping cream with a few dashes of cinnamon, a dash of vanilla, and about a tablespoon of powdered sugar. I didn't measure for this one because it was a last minute addition. To both show off the skills of our culinary team as well as how much work it takes to hand whipped cream, we have Rachel and Kendall. These two wonderful women are one of the biggest reasons why we can do what we do. You might not see them on camera all the time, but they're always there in the studio with us making sure that all of our food comes out as best as we can, such as hand whipping this vanilla cinnamon whipped cream, which is now going to be generously dolloped on top of our chilled pie. I decided to go with the freeform spoon swirl technique here. And for the final improv touch, a little bit of cinnamon. So I decided to use a technique similar to when your food is too hot. You gotta hit him with the old <laughs> And just like magic, the cinnamon is now on top of the pie, creating these really cool decorations because of the way the whipped cream has been indented. And there we have it, our version of the butterscotch cinnamon pie from Undertale. Seeing the pie in its full glory and knowing that one day this pie will be consumed, it fills me with determination. Okay, I'm just gonna slide this pie right out. Ooh. The layers are clean, everything looks pretty good. It's a relatively simple recipe, but it's one of those dishes where the sum of its parts is greater than the whole. Wait, I mean the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Tasting the pie in all its butterscotch and cinnamon deliciousness, it fills me with determination. Oh, I completely forgot about Sans. Let's see if he wants some. 